So in my last couple videos, I went over uh, sort of the business side of this farm and vegetable farms in general. Um, and it's gotten me thinking that um, I want to do a video explaining why farm at all. Like, why did I get into this um, and why you should, if you're interested in this. Um, because I think there's a lot of benefits more than just the money. And I think it's a lifestyle that a lot of people could fall in love with. Um, definitely not for everybody, but there's a lot of people out there I've met that surprised me how interested they are in this. And I want to explain some of the benefits that I've reaped so far from having this farm, skills that I've learned, and why I love farming so much. And to start off, I want to explain that, you know, I had the video last week where I'm explaining, you know, uh, what it takes to get to a level where you're making $4,000 a week. Um, and that's really just the summer. We do produce vegetables in the winter and it's probably one to $2,000 a week. So, um, you know, the spring, it slowly climbs up. And then prime summer, you're hitting 4,000 a week. We'll probably go even a little bit higher. We might hit 5,000 a week. And then it'll start to go down starting in September and then eventually down to 2,000 a week again. So I wanted to throw that out there. And it also, I have a huge benefit um, compared to most people to get to this level because I've lived with my parents to start this farm. So I have had no real expenses personally um, so I'm very privileged to be in the position to have a farm like this and be in a position where I didn't have to live off the income I made from it for the past three years. Um, I think I, it, it could have been done with me not living with my parents, but probably a much more difficult in our climate and our market, um, just making the amount of money you need to live. And I'm just now at the position where I'm going to start paying myself uh, about the same as what I pay my employees. And then eventually it's going to be more and more than that. But I do want to explain that to people. Um, I'm in a very privileged position to be here. And I understand that um, not all people, very few people are going to be able to live with their parents and build a farm like this. Um, but it's not like it was easy for me at all. It still was a lot of blood, sweat and tears going into building this place. And I didn't really spend any money on myself the last you know, basically seven years, to be honest. Um, and eventually I'll come out with a video explaining a little bit more about my background and stuff. But today I want to go into why I love farming and why I think if you're watching this video, you might love it too. So let's get into it. So the way I got interested in farming in general, vegetable farming, is when I graduated college, and my senior year of college, I saw what all my friends were, the path my friends were going down and um, what kind of jobs people were getting. And I just kind of knew that that couldn't work for me. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of my friends were just doing, going down the desk job route, the, the rat race route. And um, I just, felt it in my soul that I couldn't do that. I just am not capable of sitting at a desk or doing um, what I call matrix work. You know, just you're working at a department store, or you're in some kind of sales job, and uh, eventually you can make a lot of money doing that. But um, just to me, that is a path to misery. I know that in my soul that I can't do that. And again, I want to reiterate that I'm very privileged to be in the position to not have to do that. Um, I had, you know, my story is kind of long, but um, I'm not going to go into it in detail here. But I spent a couple of years working in Chicago doing uh, volunteer work for certain volunteer organizations um, around food. Um, one year I worked at a soup kitchen for a year and it was a blast. Um, and then the next year I worked at a food pantry, which actually weirdly taught me a lot about what I'm doing now. Um, 
and and it was actually a lot of entrepreneurial kind of stuff but uh those two years um i didn't make any money really it was like uh they get they pay you a stipend and living expenses and stuff but i didn't make any money so um that's what i did my first two years out of college and it was a very positive experience for me although i just had no money um where most of my friends were starting to make you know 50 to 75 thousand a year living on their own all that kind of stuff so I knew that Chicago wasn't going to work for me long term, so I ended up moving out here to Wyoming, where my family's had property for many years, and uh, ended up working at a vegetable farm, and still very good friends with that vegetable farm to this day, and they're literally like two miles over there. But when I was in Chicago, I saw some vegetable farms that were in the south side, which is a really rough part of town, lots of drug activity, gang activity, murders. Um, if you know anything about Chicago, you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of that going on there. And, um, what I saw from those farms is that the kids that would have been dealing drugs were working, they were farming, doing similar kind of stuff to me. And they were doing it on parking lots, just building compost, putting it two, three feet deep and growing, um, stuff like spinach, the same kind of stuff I grow here and selling it to restaurants. That's really what got my wheels turning with this whole vegetable farm thing. And when I heard about the farm out here, that's when I decided to move out here and work there and sort of got my ball rolling on the, the vegetable farm front. But to go back to what I'm talking about, the, the, that was an example of giving people a purpose that otherwise they'd be dealing drugs. Because in the south side, in the west side of Chicago, there's no jobs. There's no nothing. There's no grocery stores or anything. So... It was an, a business that formed that was giving people something to do that was really positive for the community. And I, back to my college experience, you know, I just saw what all my friends were doing and I just know that I can't do something that doesn't matter. And to me, a lot of what they were doing was just pointless. Um, it doesn't really do anything positive for the world. And again, I'm coming from a real privileged point of view right you know a lot of people have to do that kind of stuff to survive i have been fortunate enough to not have to survive i've had other ways of you know surviving the last couple of years so i don't have to do the rat race um I've, i'm very lucky in that way but i wanted to do something that actually was making a difference and making the world a better place and that's how i got interested in vegetable farming and then um the the benefit to doing this now that I'm actually in it and selling to people on a regular basis, I'm making people's lives better by selling, or I shouldn't say that we are, cause I have employees now and this is much bigger than me. It's not about my ego at all. And this whole YouTube channel is not about my ego. I genuinely want to get more people interested in this, but this food, everything around me is filled with nutrition light, sunlight, energy. It is, I feel differently when I eat this more often. There is a huge amount of health benefits to people eating this food. And it is honestly basically about the same price as the grocery store right now. There's very little price difference right now. And it is a uh, food that can withstand uh, food shortages. If there is food trucks and stuff not coming here, there's, this is a source of food. It's not much, I'm not going to lie. You know, if we have truck stop coming, we're going to sell out real fast. It's not like this is going to feed the community. This farm alone is not going to feed my community, my tiny community if that happens. So I'm not really advocating for that, but I'm just saying that technically this is a food source. Um, this is basically a local produce department and, um, so there's a huge amount of value that this farm is bringing to people that selling stuff made in China at a department store is, in my opinion, not. And the other big benefit to this is I'm employing people now. I'm employing people and teaching them life skills that they can put on their resume and not only put on their resume, but they'll be able to grow their own stuff in some ways. They're going to learn skills here on working land, on building soil, on building fertility that they don't teach in school. You know, 
if I had worked on a farm like this when I was 18, my life would have been a very different experience. Um, and so I'm really excited to be able to provide that experience to people now. Um, and if you're interested in doing something that actually matters, starting a farm like this provides all of those benefits to the bigger picture, the outside community than just a typical rat race job. So there's a lot of value that a business like this provides to people. If that's something that's important to you and you want to do something with purpose that, with, that matters, this is a really good option. And it's, I'm seeing the benefits more and more the deeper I get into this business because I'm still a long ways away from where I want to be with this business. Um, but it's much bigger than just making money to me. This whole business is much bigger than that. And if doing something that matters and has purpose is valuable to you, this is a viable career path for you. So another reason why I love farming and love my job is this. I get to work outside. And for me, I'm an outdoorsy person. I, I spend most of my free time on the weekends hiking and spending time in the mountains here in uh, Cody or around Cody. And so I love working outside, even when it's not nice out. And today is actually 98 degrees. I don't even notice it that much because I'm so used to it. But I also grew up in Chicago. And to me, this height is nothing compared to Chicago. It's not humid. It's dry. It's beautiful. Um, and it's actually kind of overcast today. So it's really weird. It doesn't feel that hot. But I love working outside. And um, I love the exercise that I get working here. You know, I'm not going to be you know, a lot of my friends are kind of having health problems already and they're only 33. I'm 33 and I'm in really good shape. I'm walking like 10,000 steps a day. Um, and I'm not exhausted now that I have help. It's not like too much exercise because when you're doing this by yourself, it's too much exercise. But, you know, this is a really nice, happy medium now. And I am just in love with what I do. Um, it's, and I'm, I'm, I'm surrounded by you know, beautiful plants all the time. So if you're a type of the person that likes being in nature and outside, this is a spectacular office, you know, um, I, I don't think many cubicles are going to look as nice as this. So if you like to work outside, it's just, you know, there's no better thing to do. And I'm pretty spoiled also being in Wyoming. The weather is spectacular here during the growing season. I think compared to most places, the South is definitely going to be rougher working outside. Um, but our winters and our springs are way colder than most other places. So I'm not feeling too bad. Um, I still work in the winter and do go outside. So, um, I still have to walk out in the greenhouses even when it's negative 30. So I still have to do stuff when it's really cold. And I don't know, for me, once it's below zero, I don't really notice the difference between negative five and negative 30. So it's like no big deal. And again, that's not for everybody, but for me, I love working outside. Um, I can't do the desk job stuff, working inside under artificial lights all day, I go crazy. I've done a little bit of that in my life and it's just not for me. So if you're not that type of person either, this is a great career path for you. So another reason to start a farm is you learn real life skills that you do not learn in school these days. I have learned more starting this farm that actually is going to benefit me the rest of my life than my entire college education, bar none. No, no questions asked. Um, the skills that I learned in college, I've pretty much already forgotten. I didn't even learn anything in college, for real. Like the, I didn't learn anything about business, and I went to business school. I didn't learn anything about <sighs> real-life skills, okay? So since I've started the farm... I have learned basic plumbing, basic electrical, basic building, all these greenhouses I had to build myself right now. Um, all of the plumbing, the irrigation that's buried six feet deep around the farm, I did all that myself. I learned how to fuse pipe, which is absolutely brutal if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, and electrical, I've wired all the fans in all the greenhouses, wired all of the stuff in the wash pack building. 
Um, that's stuff that I'm definitely going to be using the rest of my life. If I'm going to renovate a house someday or do basic um, plumbing in my house, stuff like that, huge benefit for the rest of my life. This plant identification. Um, I could go in a place like Chicago. I just was in Chicago two weeks ago and I recognized tons of plants that I see right around here that um, actually surprised me. I didn't think the, the weeds would be the same there, but they are like this lamb's quarter. I saw this in Chicago. Um, grass, we got that. I mean, everybody knows what grass is. Um, thistle, amaranth, all that kind of stuff. I know what it is, how it behaves, how to take care of it. So if I buy property somewhere else, I can know how to manage those plants or let them go or, you know, pull them, those kinds of things. I know how to work land. I can look at a certain plot of land and tell you how much food I could grow on it. Growing food is probably the most valuable skill that I've learned by doing this because I could start a garden like nobody's business because when you learn how to grow high intensity vegetables on very small acreage, the same concepts applied to a couple hundred square feet in your backyard can pretty much triple your yields. Um, and, you know, full disclosure, I do have a gardening course in the description that I do teach pretty much this method of growing in your backyard um, with some tweaks. But, uh, you know, you can learn how to grow a lot of food with these techniques. And so, I have learned so many life skills in the last four years of building this farm that I have never learned in school. I, I could have learned them when I was 16. I could have started learning all that stuff when I was way younger, but you know, that's just not the world that I grew up in. And, um, luckily I had that great never sing farm course to teach a lot of that stuff, but a lot of it, I just learned by doing it, um, and going to Ace Hardware and asking a million questions. Ace Hardware is probably the cheapest education out there. Um, that's why they call it the helpful place. But, um, man, that is probably one of the biggest reasons to start a farm. I mean, I wouldn't say learning life skills is a reason to start one, but it's just, it's a huge benefit. You know, most of my friends, I wouldn't hire them. You know, they're doing, doing desk work and stuff. You don't have much life skills. You're p calling a plumber, you're calling an electrician. You're not, you don't know how to do much stuff. You don't know how to do many handy things. And, um, I want to see, I want to live in a world where more people know how to do practical things. One of the nice things about living in Wyoming is a lot of kids around here do grow up learning those kinds of skills because this is still somewhat of a farm community. It's changing. Um, and we actually have quite a bit of Amish people that live nearby that are very knowledgeable and all that stuff. But like the working with your hands and learning all of those skills are something you're going to take with you the rest of your life. You know, I can confidently do basic plumbing, electrical, look at a piece of land, tell you how to grow certain crops. Um, I mean, I'm at the point where people are asking me questions on how to, gr how to manage their own land. Um, people want me to come out and consult for them just because they see what I'm doing here. So if you do this, you're going to gain all those skills and it's going to be tough to learn them. I'm not going to lie. It's not like as simple as, uh, watching a video or reading a book. Um, I learned most of this stuff by failing and screwing up, but, um, you don't necessarily have to screw up. You know, you could definitely do it more intelligently, but at the end of the day, doing it is the best way to learn. But those life skills are transferable to your children. You, you're going to be able to teach your kids how to do that kind of stuff in which I wish I learned more of that when I was a kid. Um, a lot of skills that are just lost in today's day and age. I don't see a lot of my generation super knowledgeable with that stuff, at least where I grew up. I grew up in the Chicago suburbs, so it's not a farming community at all. So that's part of what I, where I'm coming from. But uh, I want to live in a world where a lot more people understand that kind of stuff just because it builds confidence to be able to do that kind of stuff, you know? So um, huge reason to do this if you're, totally foreign to farming at all, that's a good reason to do it. So I sort of covered this in my last two videos, uh, or touched on it at least, but if you start a farm like this, you can make real money. You know, 4,000 a week, that's the business's income. That's not necessarily what you're paying yourself right off the bat at least, but that's a real income eventually. So there's a lot of costs involved in all of this. And what I'm talking about when I say 4,000 a week, I'm talking about sales and production really. Um, but 
I'm at a point now where I have enough coming in that I can start paying myself probably about, you know, a couple thousand a month. And, um, it's taken me a long time to get there, but eventually once you reinvest and I'm almost at the point where I'm, all I'm going to be doing to reinvest from now on is building more greenhouses. And there's actually a grant out there, NRCS grant where you can apply for it and almost everybody gets accepted. And basically there's a grant that pays for the materials at least for your greenhouse. So the high tunnels and stuff you can get paid for. You still have to build them and it's, it's no small task, believe me. But um, it's an amazing program because um, that makes it easier to grow your farm. But the income is significant. It's not just gardening. Um, one of the things I want to make videos like this, the reasons I want to make videos like this is because this is not gardening. This is farming. Um, this is not gardening at all. A lot of people who want to work here think this is gardening and they just don't last because it's not the same. It's much more intense. There's a lot of production happening here and a lot of movement. You know, these beds are always in production. There's always something growing in them the whole growing season. And so it's a food factory. That's what this business is. And that allows you to create a real income once you have the market for it. And I kind of go into that a lot more in my previous video, but once you reinvest, you know, what my goals are for this farm is I would like it to be a $300,000 a year business. Now that doesn't mean I'm paying myself $300,000, but I think I could probably pay a hundred thousand just knowing enough about where the costs are and everything or even more. And I plan on having other kinds of income, so I'm not sure if that's really what I'm going to do, but um, there's a real business and real income here if you start a farm. Um, it's not easy. It takes a couple of years to get to that level. You know, the first couple of years, you pretty much have to reinvest everything and make sure you buy infrastructure that's going to make you have a work-life balance that's, ha that's good for you. And I'm also talking about working 40 hours a week eventually. Um, I'm almost there right now, actually. Um, and it's, it was definitely a couple of years of 70 hours a week during the growing season, especially if you're building these kinds of things. But, you know, once you get past that really, those really tough couple of years, there's a real income here um, that could support a family and all that good stuff. Um, and especially if you want to throw in the other things you could do with like YouTube, making YouTube videos, that's a huge potential revenue source. Um, and people really want this kind of stuff right now. I think the world is really gravitating more and more towards this kind of food system. But um, the bottom line is there's real money here and um, it's not just a hobby or a little side income. You can make a real serious income, you know, six figures, no problem, eventually. Um, and again, it's not easy. I go into all of the difficulties with that in my last video. I'll try and put a link to that somewhere in here. Um, but there is a real income here um, that's going to be worth your time eventually. And you're going to be paying yourself a lot more than just, you know, $17 an hour once you get things dialed in. So um, huge reason to do this. It's not like this is just uh, a hobby or something like that. There's a real business here with a real income um, and it's not just some pie in the sky idea. So the last and probably most important reason to start a farm is once you build this, you have a sellable asset. And that's probably gonna sound crazy to some people who actually are into farming, um, but my vision is eventually that this is going to be a turnkey business just like a restaurant that can be sold now in order for that to happen i definitely need more people to be farming um but this farm i can actually have people with no experience show up and still produce a thousand dollars worth of value because of the infrastructure that i have and that's only going to improve over time. This doesn't require a whole lot of skill. It needs people to be tough and work outside and know how to work and show up on time. But that's pretty much what McDonald's needs. You know, McDonald's is a franchise. And so when you build a farm like this in specifically the Never Sink Farm style, it is eventually going to be a turnkey business that you could sell. And 
once you build this, you've learned one more really valuable skill and that's how to build a business. Again, I went to business school. I didn't learn anything about building a business there. Luckily, my dad has built two businesses, so I learned a lot from him. And I learned a lot from just knowing a ton of other business owners and taking this farm course and stuff. But I know how to run a business and a real business, not just an online business that makes money on the internet. This is a real business, just like a restaurant or uh, McDonald's, you know, and that's huge deal. You know, businesses sell for, I, I don't even know what this would be valued at if I had it at $300,000 a year in sales and then the amount of infrastructure at that point, I'm guessing it'd be worth like a half a million, just off the top of my head, rough guess. But, you know, at that point, you're not just a farmer, you're an entrepreneur. And you're always an entrepreneur, even if you're farming, in my opinion. Um, I know that's gonna trigger some people, but all farmers are entrepreneurs. They always have to find markets, they have to sell their crops, you know, so you're still an entrepreneur, if, even if you think of yourself as just a farmer. And once you're an entrepreneur, you have complete freedom. You can, and, and you build a business like this, you can write your own ticket, you can start all sorts of other businesses attached to this, you just keep farming. I'm gonna farm for many years still, but eventually I wanna be doing other things. I don't wanna be attached to this business. And, um, you know, a lot of the, psychology and, and how people talk about farming in the old school way is you know you, you take no days off and you're attached to the farm forever and some farms have to work like that no don't get me wrong I mean I don't know much about a lot of other kinds of dairy farms or beef farms and stuff like that I don't really know much about that I don't know even about other vegetable farming methods so I just know that this style the possibility to sell it as a turnkey business eventually is there and um, so you put in, you know, say you put in a decade of, of work and you make six figures for a couple of years, but you want to get out of it, you could sell it and do something else. You know, the, your possibilities get a lot bigger when you get to that level. And uh, so it's not a dead end job. It's not a hobby. Um, there's a lot of potential in this and the world is really going towards this direction more and more every day. And I think in 10, 20 years, the opportunity to sell a business like this will be a lot higher because the demand is just through the roof. You know, for example, we just started going to a new market in a big city about an hour and a half north of here. Um, and there is nobody grow, there's nobody growing this volume of high quality vegetables up there. There's a lot of vegetables there that are brought in from other places, but there's very few local stuff and we are selling out like crazy. Um, and it's a big city. They've never seen this kind of stuff before. And it's just an hour and a half away. And that's just a, a little indicator of where I'm at. You know, in the West, I think there's a lot less of this kind of farming going on, but in the East Coast, there's probably a lot more competitive. But uh, the whole world is getting more and more interested in this. I mean, guys I went to college with are asking me how to start a farm, which I, just blows me away. Um, but the interest in this kind of stuff is skyrocketing. Um, and so that is a huge reason to start is that potential down the line. And there's so many other opportunities that could come from this just because of what I just said. The world is becoming more interested in this. Once you get to where I'm getting to, I'm still not where I wanna be. You know, I'm getting people asking me to come out and look at their property and consult on building greenhouses and building farms. There's a, the possibilities are endless, especially if you're young, you know, like I'm 33 years old. I got a job offer from a farm in Idaho to run a 500 acre potato farm. And that's because there's nobody my age who knows how to farm anymore. Like um, almost nobody, right? So the, the job market for farming is only gonna go up over time. And it's gonna be bumpy for the next, you know, couple of years, but you know, I just explained the business model pretty much in the last couple of videos and the potential in it. So there's there is money in it right now and not in ten years. But in ten years, twenty years, there's gonna be a lot more money. It's only gonna go up. Um, and so 
Anyway, I hope that inspired some people out there who are halfway interested in farming and I hope I kind of painted a realistic picture because I don't want to make it seem like it's easy and I want to explain you know where I'm coming from because I definitely have it easier than a lot of people. Um, not to say that my path was easy but um, I had a safety net in a lot of ways so um, just want to be real with that but you know I hope this inspires some people that are interested to start at least looking into it starting something on the side because um, you can do that you don't have to go full-time right away for sure I think that'd be the smartest way to do it if I had to do it again um, and uh, but I just think there's so much potential in this and if you're a kind of person that wants to exit the rat race and not work in the matrix I think this is a really good way to do it so hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you